Hello, 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 everyone, and a very, very happy Monday to you today. I hope everyone is doing well and having a lovely either start to your day or middle of your day or end to your day. Um, if you're hearing any crinkling, that's coming from behind me because one of my two um, lovely cats has decided to come in right now and make a nest out of some packing paper that I have in a, in a cardboard box here. So I think she's, I think she's settling down for the end of her day. So very, very nice to see folks. Hello, everybody. Hi, Naomi. I see Stacy is here. Rhea is here. Daniel is here. It's great to see folks. So thank you so much for joining us today. And we are also joined um, by our lovely moderator, Roxanne, and she's going to be popping in links and also reminders. And I see that she's already beat me to the punch to remind you that if you share today's live while we are live, you can be in for a $15 gift certificate to the All to New store. Now, we also have another announcement, too, because um, it is International Podcast Day, which I did not know about today, even though I love listening to podcasts. And um, usually when I'm working, I have I have a podcast playing. Um, so that is something that is near and dear to my heart. Also New has a podcast, and uh, it's been great fun to listen to um, lots of different stories and um kind of backgrounds from different people that you know through Altenu. And since it is in celebration of International Podcasting Day, they are doing, I'm just going to check my, my notes on here. They are doing a giveaway. So check Facebook for this because you'll have all the info there. Um, they will be giving away two $50 gift certificates to all to new. And there are a couple of things that you need to do to be eligible to win. And one of those is to um, share what your favorite uh, all to new podcast was, and then also let all to new know who you would like to have as a guest or listen to as a guest on an upcoming uh, podcast. And of course, go ahead and share that information as well. So more details on the Alta New Facebook page for that. So if you're interested in that, if you're a podcast person like me, then uh, you can also take the opportunity to click in and listen to some of the podcasts. Some of them are quite short. They're like maybe 15 minutes and some of them are a little bit longer. I think I'm one of the longer ones because <laughs> I got talking, couldn't stop. It was a lot of fun. Okay, I'm just going to check and see if I missed any comments. It's great to see everybody, Lisette and Natalie, Sue and Jill and Kay. Super nice to see everybody joining us today. So thank you so much for being here and thank you for sharing while we're live. Okay, so today I have um, two different kind of looks that I'm going for, clean and simple with an autumn sort of style to them. And so I'm going to show you the stamps that I am working with. They are older stamps. Um, and I love working with all the new stuff, but also I love to go through my admittedly quite a lot of old to new stamps for these lives and find some things that are maybe a bit more um, seasonal that we haven't played with maybe since last year. And so that's what I'm gonna be sharing with you today. So the first one is, this one might look familiar to you. This is so mush love. I love it because it's a pun, it's fun, it's sweet. So it's mushrooms, a lot of layering mushrooms and you can see the layering here on the back. Now you can layer these or not. And so we're gonna do a little bit of both. And then there's some really sweet sentiments. Um, it must be love. Uh, um, you're such a fun guy, like fun guy. And um, they're just super sweet and a lot of fun to play with. So we'll be looking at this. Of course, there is a matching die set that goes along with it. And that really gives you the ability to create some really sweet, let me see if I've got one at hand really sweet little mushrooms. So you don't have to do the fussy cutting around there and you can have a lot of fun with um, creating some really sweet cards. 
So that is one set that we're going to play with. And then I'm going to switch gears a little bit. And we are getting into autumn. So the grateful set. Now this is a little tiny one. So sometimes these guys, I'm guilty of kind of forgetting that I have some smaller ones and um, they get lost in among all of the others. So I'm always really happy to kind of pull those out and have a play. So the grateful has a little acorn and then it has the like hat, what we would always call the hat of the acorn. So again, you can do some layering and then the word grateful on there. There is, of course, a coordinating die. So this makes it super easy to do little accent pieces on cards like that. So we'll be taking a look at using some mushrooms and some acorns. So I feel like we're headed out into the woods or something. We're going to get in touch with nature, but it is autumn around here in Hamburg, Germany. So it's uh, definitely time to be looking, for me anyway, to be looking at some of those autumn themed cards. So why don't we get started? Now I have to say I've got a lot of card projects that I want to show you. And um, some of them, I'm, I'm going like quite clean and simple with these, mostly because we've got um, some small elements, like they're quite petite, the acorn and the mushrooms. So what I wanted to do is share with you some really simple card designs um, that maybe have a little bit more um, like some folding or some different layering options too, just so that we can see how we can kind of play with some of those um, stamps. Okay, so I'm gonna just check our comments here quickly. Sue, you <laughs> Sue, you wanted me to use the sweet ginkgo set. I don't have that one. I do like ginkgo leaves though. Okay, so it looks like we are all doing fine. Okay, so I am going to show you my work surface. Tilt you down there and we can get started on our first card here. So as I mentioned, I've got quite a lot of like little bits and pieces that I've already done die cutting and stamping on so that we can look at some of the assembly. But first of all, I thought a really simple, fun folded card is always nice, especially with these smaller images. So let's take a look at how to do this. Really easy to do. Um, this is called either an S fold card or a Z fold card, you know, because you've got this kind of accordion style. Really, really easy. And it also gives a nice, um, maybe something a little bit different than just your standard, you know, kind of opens like a book card. So all you need to do for this, if you're starting with your folded card, you've got the fold on the side here, is just wrap this up toward the top, like so, and then score. Now, I like to use a bone folder just to get a really crisp edge on here. I might be the only human who still has a wooden bone folder. <laughs> I think most of them are plastic these days, but I'm old school. So now I've got this really fun accordion fold on here. Okay, so the next thing I want to do, just jumping into this, I'm going to start stamping my mushrooms. So let me get my trusty misty here. I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to move my teacup since it's just right in the way and set that over here. And then we can start stamping with our mushrooms. Love you so much. It's so cute. I love that. Okay, so what I want to do is create a, like a small collage here. So I've got a couple of different sizes of mushrooms. I've got the large one and then a little tiny one and then kind of a medium sized one here. And I've got, this is the same as this, just stamped with different colors and the, with a different layering possibility. So let's start with this. I'm gonna begin with my biggest mushroom. So if you take a look here, and you see the largest, the largest mushroom here, that's the silhouette. And then what you can do, flip this over so you can see, what you can do is layer, for example, the polka dots 
and this kind of um, shading that you see here, and then it will create this effect. I like actually using these two separately on top of a colored background. So let's take a look at that. And we'll see also some other options too. Now, because I know I'm going to be die cutting, I'll just go ahead and stamp these kind of anywhere on here. So I'm going to stamp my large mushroom on here. And this one I'm going to layer with two different colors. I'm going to use the fresh lemon and then marigold is going to go on top of that. So I'll start with my lighter color, which is the fresh lemon, which is one of my kind of go-to colors. I really like that fresh lemon. It's just a nice, bright, crisp color. Okay, so there's my little top of my um, mushroom. Clean this off. And then I'm going to add the polka dot portion. So I'm grab this. And this one I'm going to just simply layer right on top and then stamp that with the marigold. Let's see if I've got this layered on here correctly. I have to do a little bit of scooching. Since I'm not standing up, I always find it easier to do my lining up if I am standing up, but I can't really do that. I've got, a, I've got a camera in the way, so we'll have to aim for the best we can. And then pop that down, and there we go. Not too bad. So I'm going to brighten this up. I'm just going to do a second pass with that marigold. It's a really nice, cheerful color. And there we have it. So you can do just the one layer if you want to. You can do the two layers. You can also do the three layers. But let's take a look at what we can do besides the polka dot. If we just take that kind of shading layer, I'll pop this one down so it's the same base as I used before. And in this case, I'm going to do fresh lemon and honey drizzle. So a light bright yellow and then kind of a in more orange color of yellow. Another nice fall color combination. Maybe not entirely accurate as to what mushrooms look like, but you can do your own interpretation this time, I think. So fresh lemon, we'll pop this down. And now this time, I want to add this kind of shading effect right here. So let's take a look at this. Flip that over. And again, just position this on here. I'll just scoot it closer to me. See how we're doing, there we go. And for this, I'm going to use that honey drizzle. So I've stamped this with fresh lemon. Let's see how we go with the honey drizzle. And then stamp that down. So you can see, super cute. So you've got one really sweet kind of um, layered effect, and then you've got this really fun shading effect on here too. So those are going to be our two large mushrooms. Let's stamp some of the small ones too, because there are quite a few mushrooms on this set. So they're a lot of fun, just a lot of fun to play with. So now I'm going to go for one of the smaller ones. So I've got a, this large one here, which I've got these two tops for it. I've got kind of a, an oval shaped one here that also has the dotted top and it also has some shading. I've got a little guy here and then I've got another little guy here. So I'm gonna grab this one and I'm going to do some shading, just do the shading portion of that. So this little one, I'm going to do with sun ray and honey drizzle. So again, 
a lighter color of yellow, and then a little bit darker one, just to give that kind of tinted effect. Let's see. Let me get that straight on there. Okay, so this I'll do with the lovely sun ray. Okay, pop that color down. It's fun to have the selection of yellows because then you can do some really fun lights and dark layering on here. Okay, so I'll pop this back on. And this one here is the dotted effect, the shading. And that one I will also do in Honey Drizzle. that down. So it's going to be a really fun autumn themed card. So we've got some nice autumn weather here in Hamburg, Germany. So I'm going to celebrate that with some really sweet little autumn themed cards. Okay, so again, some really sweet dimension on there and color too. Okay, now, if I wanted to, if I was creating a scene here, I could add my stems. So the mushrooms all have a little stem to go along. And you can sort of choose those. I'll put some white behind here so you can see. You've got stems that sort of go in either direction, some tall ones. And then you've got a short little stem here. So what you could do, of course, if you wanted to create a scene here on your um, cardstock is simply stamp your mushroom stems to kind of align with the bottom portion of that. Since I'm doing die cutting, I'm just going to pop down the stems here. So I'll show you one of the long stems and one of the short stems. Now the stems can be lots and lots of different colors, of course. For this one, I'm using hazelnut as my stem color. So this just worked really nicely with these colors. You can see how beautifully they all go together just in terms of they're all nice warm colors. Um, really with the exception of the marigold, these are all really nice shades of um, yellow. And then the marigold gives us that little burst of color. But the hazelnut, this is such a great color for lots of different things but um, also really nice for mushroom stems. Probably would be good for the mushroom top as well. Okay, pop these down. So you can see now I've got some nice warm tones on there. And then what all I need to do is just do my die cutting. And of course, this is the part where you can run everything through pretty much together. These two are going to share the same die because it's the same top of the stamp, but the others you can die cut separately. Let me just get this stem back in place here and then we can take a look. So what I like to do is um, take the cutting dies, see if I can, find one to hand, here we go. And I use a little bit of masking tape, just pop that down, secure it in place, and send it through your die cutting machine. Of course, you've also got the stems as well here too. So when I have those all run through my die cutting machine, this is the magic of television, I guess, I will have a little mushrooms that when I secure the stems onto the back of the mushroom top, I'll have little pieces that look like this. So here's the short on the, on the big mushroom cap. Here's the long stem on the mushroom cap. And I just glued or taped the stems right onto the back of this. I've got some foam tape on here because I wanted to create a bit of a layered effect on here. So let's again, Take a look at our card. Get my mushrooms out of the way. So you can see I've got them mounted onto this blue circle that when I open this, it's actually two circles that are layered together. So let me show you with my circle on here how to put this all together. 
Now the circle is a two and a half inch wide circle die, which I honestly, I don't think I ever really put it away. It's one of my favorites. It's a super simple um, die set. Let me grab the package. I can show you. It's the stained glass window die set. And I've used this quite a lot just because it is such a nice circle. So it's designed to go with this stamp set, which is also really nice. But the die by itself is fantastic. So what I did there is die cut a circle from blue cardstock. And then I die cut a second circle from blue cardstock and cut that in half. So I've got two that are gonna go together. And then what I can do, you'll notice that this is not exactly in half. This side is a little bit bigger than this side, which means that I just have a little bit more presence here on the front of the card. So let me grab some of my double-sided tape here. We'll just start putting this together really easy to do. And it's nice just to have a, a little bit different um, card layout, I think. I know I, I quite like doing these fold back cards just because it gives something a little bit more um, inspiring, I think, when I'm designing the card. Very often we get sort of set in our ways in terms of how we design a card, if you're often doing them vertically or you find yourself only doing them horizontally, you know, just kind of switch it up. So then I'm going to align this cut section of my circle with the fold of the card. And I can put it kind of anywhere. I think I really put it a little bit closer to the bottom here. And then just line that up and place it down. So there we go. And then I'm gonna open this up and put down the other portion of this. Now you may be wondering, why don't you just put down, you know, the whole circle and then have it bent. The reason for that is because it generally, when you fold like a nice thick card stock that you are using for your card base, if you have something going over that fold, it doesn't really stay properly. <laughs> it only takes one time of trying it that it's hard to describe, but if you do it, you'll know, you'll see exactly what I mean. The paper can sort of shift. Um, if you're using a glue stick to adhere this or a liquid glue, it can kind of slide around and um, it just doesn't, doesn't kind of stay the way you want it to. So this was just a little bit more polished of an effect. So I'm going to line this up. I'm not bumping it right up. I'm gonna allow space for that fold in the card and then pop that down. Okay, so now I've got my partially folded piece on here. And then what I'm going to do is kind of figure out where on here, on the inside back, I can position my circle so that it will lay together. So again, just put a little bit of tape on here. Whatever kind of adhesive you normally use for your card making. And then we can position this down as well. So it's the same circle. We don't have to worry about that lining up perfectly because I know it will. And then just position this like so. So then that way when the card is folded, it's a full circle. And when it's open, then I've got the two. Okay. And then for the front of my card, I'm going to position this large mushroom here. And then I've got my smaller one kind of going like so. And again, I've got the, these up on foam tape. Kind of depends on um, if it's a mailing card, if it's going quite a long distance, I find that foam tape still does hold up quite well. Um, kind of depends on, again, also how the thickness of your foam tape layers, if you're layering on quite a lot. But I love using foam tape, especially for like really clean and simple cards, because I find that it helps, really does help to um, add a little bit more presence to a very clean and simple design. Okay, so I'm going to pop this little guy down here too. So immediately I've got a really sweet um, 
little focal. And of course, these colors will contrast really nicely with the blue. Okay, and then for the other side of my card, I want to have another little mushroom here, also up on foam tape. Now, what I did with my original card is with these stems, I would put foam tape on here. I just cut the pieces really small, but I figured um, in the interest of um, <laughs> video time and your time today that you don't want to watch me struggle with the foam tape. So I'm taking some shortcuts on the adhesive. I'm going to pop this one down here. And then when I open this up, I've got another little mushroom who can go right here. And this one I'm just putting down, not with foam tape, but with regular adhesive, just because I don't want too many bumps going on when the card is closed. So then he's going to go right there. And so then this way, when I have my card folded up, I've got my two little mushrooms here and I've got my um, kind of a nice focal element on here. And then when I open this up, I have plenty of room to add in the sentiment, the love you so much, which I've stamped here. Now this is using the obsidian uh, black pigment ink, which you guys know that I use that pretty regularly for all of the sentiments and things. It just comes out really nicely. And then I've got a couple of these little hearts that are stamped also with the marigold, just to add some little accent pieces on here. Um, and those, of course, are also on the same stamp set. And there, there are dies to go along with those. And then I've got another little one just stamped on directly on here. So then this way, I have a really sweet, simple card design that can be added to, or it can be left just as it is. So I was kind of debating, should I put on some, um, some additional ribbons or sequins or something splattering with ink, but I think, I think I quite like it the way it is. So you can take it into a different direction if you want to, or you can kind of leave it as is. So that is our first card, and that is um, one way to use these really sweet stamps. I just think they're a lot of fun. So let's take a look at another look that you can get from these. So I'm going to move aside and this card. I've got so many cards. <laughs> I've got so many cards all over here. I wanted to show you, though, a couple of different looks that you can get with this. So with this one, for example, we are able to get a really kind of traditional, what I think of like a, a more of a folksy look or kind of a folklore look, Scandinavian look maybe, but really classic red and um, white designs. Now with this, of course, all you need to do is just stamp the, um, the details. So you're not stamping the background layer, you're not stamping this part. You're only stamping this and this. So let's take a look at what that looks like, because sometimes that can seem a bit like, wait, what is she talking about? So let me grab again my Misty, because we're working with white cardstock. So you can just use your, color, your ink colors onto white cardstock. So in this case, I'm using... One of my favorite reds, which is the ruby red. You know you're a stamper if you have one, you can say one of my favorite reds or one of my favorite blues. There are just too many nice colors out there. Okay, so I'm going to grab the detail portions of this. So I've got the dots and I've got this shading effect. That stem is running after me. I'm going to keep that there. And we are only stamping this with the ruby red. Let's get this guy to stay on here. There we go. So let's ink this up with our ruby red. Crisp, bright red. I love this red. It's what I would think of as like a really true, true red. You know, some reds skew more orange some skew a little bit on the 
bluish side, bluish tints, and this is just like a candy apple red. Or a ruby red, I suppose, would be <laughs> totally accurate. So then there we go. We've got our, um, our mushrooms. Let's dab this off. And set these aside. And then all I need to do, since I'm working just right onto my white cardstock, is to grab the dies, place them down as we did before, and then, surprise, <laughs> the magic of television, we have our little mushrooms. So, like a fairy tale mushroom. I think that's what I was trying to explain, like a fairy tale mushroom. So I've got my three little mushrooms here. I've got my stems. Now the stems in this case were done uh, also with hazelnut. I've got that long one. Let's see. Got a, the little short one as well. And then the long stem that curves the opposite direction. And so then if I take my um, my circle piece, and this is just made out of like a um, craft card stock, then I can simply start gluing these pieces down. So I'm going to tack these down quite um, casually. Normally when I'm doing cards, I will add a little bit more attention to the adhesive, but just for us for today. As we're looking at this, get that little stem on there, and then I want this one going the other way. And you can, of course, shorten the stems too. So if I'm holding this like so, and taking full advantage of the length of that stem, I can also snip off the end or even just, you know, shorten it down a little bit could even be like so. So you can play with the length of the stems on these if you want to. Ooh, let's see if I can pick it up. And here we go. So mushrooms always mean autumn to me. And I think it's because I've often lived in places where um, mushroom picking in the autumn was a big deal. We used to live in Poland, and um, every autumn, late summer and autumn, people would go into the forest to pick mushrooms and we'd come back with these great big baskets of mushrooms. But of course, it was always a big secret. Nobody would ever tell you like where they went. <laughs> they would never reveal their spot. But uh, if you were lucky, they might share their their bounty with you, their mushroom bounty. But uh, yeah, I would never know the difference between what is good to, to eat and what you should stay away from. So it's probably best that I was never invited to the mushroom parties. But yeah, in a beautiful fall, crisp afternoon, I imagine in the forest would be really, really fun. And the, the Polish forests where we lived by Sopot, on the Baltic Sea were are beautiful, really, really beautiful, especially in the autumn. I always think of uh, people that I knew going mushroom hunting in these gorgeous autumn forests. Okay, and then maybe pop this little guy down here. And then you've got a really sweet and easy little trio that can go together. Now, in this case, what I've done is pop them onto a really simply spattered background. Now the background is splattered with lava rock. Um, and this is a lovely dark, dark gray, um, as you know, rock, well, basically a rock color, just as the name describes. And it will give you this kind of soft effect. It's not quite as stark as a black, but because it's a dye ink, you know, it works just perfectly to um, just put a little bit on your craft mat add some water and then splatter that. Super easy to do and gives a little bit of texture for the back of this. And then I've got, there's so much room in my heart for you. These really do crack me up. And then a little heart on here. Super easy to do. And I like also mixing the gray and the red for a nice pop of color with some of this craft 
cardstock color. It just really gives a nice autumn feel to it. So that is our second card. You can see this is this is just really sweet. Now, if you've got, you know, if you get going like I obviously did, you could always have something that goes on the inside of your card as well. So if you find yourself with lots of little mushrooms to play with, then um, you've got a fun way to put them to use. Okay, so um, a couple of other things things that I just want to show you just quickly. Um, I want to show you a different way to use or different look that you can get when you're using some of the same technique on here. So as I noted, as we mentioned, you can do this just right onto your white cardstock. You can also mix in some other kinds of colors. Some colors that may not seem like mushroom colors. But let's take a look. I'll show you what I mean. So in this case, I'm going to be working with Parrot, which obviously got some other ink spilled on the lid. And I'm going to take some fresh lemon and I'm going to do Aqualicious. So I'm going to show you how these can be used with some of that shading, uh, shading stamp that we took a look at. So let me grab my stamps. Here we are. I have to find them laying in this very messy work surface. I'm going to take the large one and I will take this fun kind of oval shaped one, this medium one, and then I will also take a small one. Pop those all down. And kind of get my magnets in place here. Now for these, I'm gonna do some different colors. So I'm gonna take the parrot, which is not this color. Um, it's a nice, bright, fresh parrot green. I'm gonna ink up the large image here. The medium one I'm going to do with fresh lemon. I figure I may as well just do all of these in one go. And the little one, Let's do with our Aqualicious. So I love it when you can get lots of different looks from a stamp, and this is definitely one that you would think at first maybe wouldn't lend itself well to that, but I think it definitely does. So now I've got my three little, I guess, fantasy mushrooms, bright green, bright yellow, <laughs> Aqualicious. And then what I'm going to do is just add the shading on here. So let's take the shading for our large mushroom, pop that down. And then the shading for the oval one is this guy right here. Position this down. And then for this little guy, it's right here. And all of the shading I'm going to do with uh, Lava Rock. Really nice dark color. I think I've got these about right. <laughs> we'll find out. You may find sometimes that it's easier to stamp the shading in a darker color before you do the lighter color on top. You can try that. I tried them both ways, and it, it really um, just would be a matter of personal preference, but you could certainly do that. So, for example, stamp the shading in a dark color and then do the lighter colors on top. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to see um, where you're lining them up. But then you've got some really fun, bright, sort of whimsical looking little mushrooms. And then, of course, when you die cut them, you can have little mushrooms that look like this. And again, I've got that circle. You can see how useful that circle is and how it's just really the perfect size. So here's my Aqualicious, there's the parrot, and there's that fresh lemon. So really, really sweet, easy to do. And um, the stems on this one, let me check. The stems are 
with evening gray. So that is the lighter of the two grays that I tend to use all the time. So lava rock being the darker that you see up here, evening gray being this soft kind of um, light, really warm gray I find here. So these all come together. These are all up on foam tape. So is the panel here. And then it must be love. And I've got some gray cardstock on the backing here as well. So super duper easy to do. Really, really fun. But an, another nice kind of contrast, if you think about this being the, essentially the same, um, you know, the die cut and the, the um, highlighting on there. And then take a look and how very different it is from this one. So lots of really fun effects you can get with this stamp set. I have one more that I just want to show you because I found it really sweet and fun. Kind of gives a, um, a another really simple and sweet effect. You don't have to do any stamping if you have the dies. So if you simply take your little mushroom cap, place it onto some brightly colored cardstock, then you can end up with super easy to assemble little mushroom accents. So let's see, getting the stem on the wrong way. I guess I could go either way though. You could just simply die cut those and have them ready to go. So on this card, I just die cut from literally scraps of cardstock that I have in my stash that I keep telling myself I need to use these up because we know we always, you know, hang on to them. And for something like this, it's perfect because those little hearts, the little mushroom tops and the stems. Now this card layout is another one of the folded kinds of cards that I really like to do. So it's going to open like this. It's called a gatefold style of card. You can imagine why. And I'll show you how easy that is to do. Super simple. So again, I've got my card with the fold on one side. And all I need to do is open it up, clear my space, open it up. And here's the fold in the center. And I'm just going to fold this in. Now, there's a crease, there's kind of a bump in the center where that fold is. I don't want this to go to one side, I want it to go right on top. If I have it go to one side or the other, then I will have a gap when I close my card. Okay, so I'm gonna fold that up, turn this around, and do the very same thing, oops, on the other side. I thought my cat was sleeping, but it seems like she's been, she's been investigating something, so. Hopefully she'll lay back down soon enough. Okay, and then again, do my bone folder on here. Turn this around and really burnish that. And then I have my gatefold card. Now, one thing you'll notice is that you've got the original fold of your card right here in the center. So what I always like to do is just fill this in with something else. So I've lined this one with some red cardstock. So then that way you'll just cover up that inner seam on there. So if that bothers you, um, there's an easy way to, to disguise that. And so in this case, again, I'm using that circle piece. I've got my little mushrooms on here. I've got this strip, you're such a fun guy. <laughs> And I've got a little strip here of that spattered background. And this is also the uh, lava rock. And then when I open this up, again, like a little gatefold, I've got this on here, mush, mush be love, and another sweet little mushroom on there. So this one is quite quick and easy to do. If you're stumped for ways to use this die set, just remember you can always just grab some of your scraps Again, these can be quite playful colors. They don't have to be really natural colors, but um, you can have a lot of fun with coordinating some of those really bright little end bits of cardstock because I cannot be the only person who has 
this like times a million in a giant plastic container. And I'm, it is my new year's resolution every year to go through that and put it to use or recycle it. So this is one great way to put it to use because I haven't had the heart to recycle anything yet. Hi, Avril. Good to see you joining. She says she's late to the party. Well, we're just glad that you're here, Avril. So we've been playing with some mushroom stamps. Now we have a little bit of time left, and I also want to get us to our other stamp set, which is the Grateful set. Now let me unbury everything so we can take a look at this. So this is the little acorn. You've got the acorn. You've got the acorn top. And then the nice word grateful, there is a grateful die that goes along that's um, just the acorn, which is fantastic. It really is a lot of fun. So there are a couple of, not tricks, I guess, to this, but there are some really fun ways that you can use this in, um, in some different ways. So you can get some different looks from this. So I'm going to start with this card and then I've got another one that I want to show you too. So I'm going to pop down my cardstock in my Misty here. And I'm going to stamp first the large portion of the acorn. So here's the thing with the acorn. You've got the acorn body, I guess, and then you've got the acorn cat or the little, little top to it. So when you stamp your acorn, you're going to use one color and then you'll use a different color to stamp the top, to layer it on top. So this is another layering stamp set. The trick or the thing to keep in mind is that you'll want to use your darker color for the main portion of the acorn and your lighter color for the top. So that's a little bit um, counterintuitive for me anyway. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna stamp this one and I'm going to use um, honey drizzle and hazelnut for this. So I'm going to start with the hazelnut because this is the darker color. And ink this little guy up. You can see he's just a really sweet size. So starting with my darker color, Okay, and there he is. And the reason that you want the darker color here is because you're going to over stamp with a lighter color to kind of fill in the open area there. If you want to, I mean, you could leave this as it is because it, it looks really nice. Um, as is, you can die cut this or have it be, or you can add some extra dimension to it. So let's see, going to, <laughs> Um, yeah, Avril, it's not those kinds of party mushrooms. <laughs> she was making a joke about my party mushrooms comment. So we are having a small party with our mushrooms, but it's nothing too exotic. Okay, so for this one, it's going to be honey drizzle. So that's the lighter of the colors. And you'll just see how this will fill in some of that open area. And there we go. So then you have a really sweet little colorful autumn acorn. And again, we've got the die for it. I've got the die here somewhere for it. Here we go. And then all you need to do is just pop this down and run it through your die cutting machine. And you will have a little, a sweet little acorn. So then the other thing that you can do with this, well, actually, let me show you. With this one, I've done two of the um, acorns. So this one is using our hazelnut and honey drizzle. And then, or excuse me, this one is the hazelnut and honey drizzle. The other is using, this is a great ink for the acorn, milk chocolate and chamomile. Where's the chamomile? So some chamomile tea to wash down your milk chocolate. Um, so these two are creating this acorn here. Now I've also got, again, one of my circles. Here's the word grateful from that same stamp set. This piece here is from a stamp set you may be familiar with. It's the Sophisticated Wreath. And I've used just this 
kind of like pine bow, I guess, or bow effect to um, create a portion of a frame on here. And to do that, I'm just using Forest Glades and Olive ink. So those are those two colors there. So you can start to see where you can have some real fun with all of the different colors on here. So those two are popped up on here. I've got some foam tape. Now, if you wanted a slightly different look, maybe without this textured top, you can definitely get a smoother, maybe more, bit more modern look. So this, I'm gonna grab, let's see, I'm gonna grab the Snapdragon and what else? Uh, I'll do a Honey Drizzle. And all you need to do here is stamp, let's see. I'll do Snapdragon for the bottom portion or the main portion of my acorn. Okay, so I've got that nice and bright, vivid color. And then separately, I'm going to stamp the little top. We always call them hats, acorn hats, or caps maybe is what they're supposed to be called. I'm not sure uh, <laughs> of the technical terms. This is why I should not be out in the forest picking mushrooms with my neighbors, right? So here we go. And then I've got that little cap on there. Then what I'll do is die cut this acorn. Now there isn't a separate die for just the top, but this is really easy to fussy cut. So that's what I've done here. Let me set this to the side. Let me show you what I've got here. So I'll take one of these, which I've die cut, and then take another one, which I've just trimmed around. They're quite easy, even if you're like me and you don't really care for fussy cutting. This is the, the reason that the dies are so great. And just go around and leave a little bit of a white edge around there. That's going to be important so that you can fit this onto the main portion of your acorn. And come around like so. And then you can just pop this right on top and it gives it such a different look. It really has a smooth little, um, more modern look, I guess. So then you just glue that right on top. And then you can have an effect that looks like this. So you can get some really, really fun different looks depending on whether or not you take advantage of that kind of textured top on the acorn, or if you cover it up with one of those smooth pieces. And again, you just need to do a little bit of the fussy cutting on here. Now in this case, I'm also using the same pine bow on here, just stamped it twice and kind of accented it. There are some little leaves and things on that same sophisticated wreath stamp set, which is it's buried under everything at this point. So you've got the bow on here, and then you've also got some of these smaller little elements too. So I always think of this as like a spring themed uh, stamp set, but you can take lots of those different elements and put them to use for autumn cards as well. Okay, so I feel like we have been through a whirlwind of different card projects and different ways to use some of these really versatile stamp sets. So I'm going to whiz through these one more time. Let's take another look. I'll kind of scoot some of these things aside because we're coming up to our hour. So it's been a really fun and quick hour. So we've got our um, grateful acorns, textured tops, and smooth tops. This is the thanks die that I want to show you also. The bold thanks set. So this is a two-layer stamp set or die set so it can create this really cool effect. We've got these two. Then we were playing with our mushrooms and we've got our die cut mushrooms here. 
with a gatefold style of card. You're such a fun guy. And other ways to put this to use, of course, we had our um, stamping with just stamping onto white cardstock and die cutting. So stamping just the detail, no layering needed here for some really fun, colorful, kind of fairy tale looks. I think that was the look I was trying to go for. And then with our bright, bold, maybe unexpected colors here with some bright green, aqua, and that fresh lemon, just to have something a little bit brighter, really also nicely going with some of that craft cardstock, which I tend to use a lot of in the autumn. I really like that for fall cards. And then finally, the first card that we started with our maybe more pastel colors of mushrooms and our um, Z fold or S fold card. A really fun way to put those smaller, more petite elements to, um, to use and having a great time with those. So hopefully if you have this set and you maybe haven't pulled it out for a while, like me, if it's been a year, <laughs> you pull it out every autumn, now might be a great time to put that to you. Same thing for our acorns, especially if you're looking ahead, if you celebrate Thanksgiving, either in the US or Canada as well, um, then this might be a great opportunity for putting some of those um, stamps and dies to use for your autumn cards. Okay, so whew, I think we've had a lot of inspiration today. Hopefully you have enjoyed this. I'm gonna tilt back up my camera so we can see each other. And so that I can say a big thank you to you for joining me this evening. Don't forget, we've got a couple more minutes um, while we are. You can share tonight's live while we're live, and you can be in for that $15 gift certificate to the Alta News store. And also, don't forget uh, International Podcasting Day. If you haven't listened to the Alta New podcast, you might have a go. And then you can also check out on Facebook their um their special that they are doing uh, where you could win one of two $50 gift certificates to the Alta New store just by checking out some of the um, Alta New podcasts. Let them know who you would like to have interviewed on the podcast. I can think of some fun people. It'd be cool to, to hear from. And if you haven't had a chance yet to, um, to check out the podcast, please do. It's called uh, Craft Your Life. It's on Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcast. If you're a podcast fanatic like me, you maybe have seen it already. So again, today we were playing with the Love You So Mush stamp set. <laughs> Uh, super versatile. There's so much that you can do with this. You can get some really fun looks with that. And also our, <laughs> I'm looking for it now. It's here somewhere underneath everything else. I think <laughs> we've got our grateful stamp set and dies. So I'll be able to show you the dies. The stamps are buried in and among the crafty things. And then also just another nod to the sophisticated wreath for some of those accent pieces to go behind the acorn and our um, fantastic circle die as well. So a big thank you to everybody for joining us tonight. Thanks Roxanne for popping in all the links and um, keeping up with all of the news and checking all the comments and everything. Appreciate that. And thank you everybody so very, very much for joining us. I hope you have a wonderful week. And uh, if you are joining me on Thursday for the Bearded Iris class, we are going to have a great time with that too. So hopefully see you then or see you, uh, I think I'm back on again next week. So do take care, have a great rest of your day and I will see you later. Take care. <laughs>